Hi there. Today I'm showing you my uh, vintage computer collection. This footage was actually meant for my uh, GPIB bus series. But uh, it turned out to be so long in uh, duration that I decided to make a separate video. So if you like it, you can give it a thumbs up or otherwise you can just take it as an introduction to uh, future videos where I'll be repairing some of these vintage computers. So yeah, uh, see you again later. So today I'm going to show you a little secret. Because behind my workbench and the reason why my, uh, my electronics lab is so small is that I have a large storage area and uh, it's right behind the curtains here. And uh, as you can see, it's basically chock a block with uh, old computers. And uh, I'm going to make a video about my computers and uh, also videos about how I repair some of them. Um, but if we just run through them uh, quickly, I have down here the computers links. I have a prototype of, of them and uh, one uh, boxed. And uh, they're all working except for one. So I'll have to repair that at some point. And uh, above that I have the Enterprise uh, 128 which was another British uh, home computer and um, that is fully working so I'm not sure whether I'll show that in another video uh, but uh, possibly yes then I have a Pong game here, it's a Philips uh, RDC 2001 and uh, above that I have a I'm not sure what it's called, it's called a Lambda Lambda uh, the green one here is a Lambda and uh, that was basically a Sinclair ZX81 clone from Hong Kong um, in the cardboard box, I have a Grundy new brain, and uh, behind that I have a French computer uh, that I'll show you later as well. On the top shelf, I have a Mimotech uh, MTX512, uh, which is my favorite computer of all times. If we continue to the other shelves down here, I have more French uh, Matra computers. Uh, they have some very interesting designs. And uh, I have everything there, printers, cassette players and uh, everything. Below that I have part of my Sinclair collection. There are some uh, Sinclair, there's a Plus 3, there's Alphacom printer. And uh, to my left here I have several ZX81s and uh, Sinclair ZX Spectrums. Some of them are fully built, but one of my ZX81s is an unbuilt kit which is uh, really uh, interesting for me. Further up I have a Sinclair ZX Spectrum Plus. I have some boxes with power supplies and stuff. Sinclair flat screen TV and uh, a QL up here which needs a new keyboard membrane. I have a little bit, I have an old Atari game here and the HP 15, uh, the limited edition. If we go down here Beyond the box that contains uh, an Atari 512, I have a Amstrad a Joyce a PCW256, I think it's called. And uh, I have to take a look at that as well uh, another time. And uh, down here I have the keyboard and the printer for it. Further up I have different Commodore computers, uh, a 128 and uh, a couple of 64s. And uh, if we continue up here, I have a Dragon 32 and uh, a hard disk for the, for the Atari. Then there's another uh, PCW256. And uh, then I have an Auric Atmos and an Auric 1 uh, in this box here. And uh, under there, I have a Jupiter Ace. Uh, actually, I have two, but one is not cased. Then I have, I think this is, uh, there we go, this is the monitor for the uh, Amstrad CPC computer which I have somewhere else in my collection. Um, if we continue to this side, uh, this is a little bit messy. I have a ICL computer uh, which was specifically designed for the Danish education market, it's called the Comet 8. And uh, I'm pretty sure that's the only one in the world uh, of its kind. 
uh, this machine is a CPM machine but it has color graphics so that's kind of uh, unique it's fully working and uh, maybe one day when I have time I will show you uh, how that works down here then I have uh, a BBC a Acorn BBC micro and a couple of uh, electrons behind the in my box here I have a ZX80 that I'm repairing and it will be featuring in a video that is coming up uh, some time in the future. Further down I have an Apple II with a couple of uh, floppy drives and uh, down here is my Commodore PET. This is uh, a 2001, this is the very first, very earliest Commodore PET with a funny uh, chiclet keypad, keypads. Uh, further down I have a K-Pro1 which is uh, one of the first portable CPM machines and uh, next to that I have a very rare Danish computer um, it's called the uh, RC Piccolo and uh, this was actually the first real computer that I uh, was uh, programming apart from a ZX80 that I have that I bought for myself and uh, then on the other side I have a I'm not quite sure whether there's some Japanese computer of no value really and uh, next to that I have a very interesting machine which is uh, a Commodore and a very unusual one the reason it's interesting is that uh, I was actually one of the people involved in the design of this machine so uh, to me this is a really rare piece of equipment although uh, feature wise it's uh, kind of junk but uh, I'll tell you the story about that one uh, sometime um, below then I have a couple of Vic 20s, Commodore Vic 20s and uh, a lot of monitors a couple of dot matrix printers uh, uh, below here down here uh, well under here I have some Epson uh, portable machines and uh, Einstein genius down here in the box below but I guess it's a bit too dark to see it down here but anyway uh, let's take out the Commodore PET and take a look at that in more detail